Okay, my name is Günther Weibel and I'm 40 years old. Okay, and when did you come to the United States? I came to the United States when I was 24 and I came as a student. I was an exchange student at first and then decided that I liked my professors over here much better than the professors in Germany and stayed on and went into a degree program. Okay, so do you maintain any connections with your friends and family in Germany? I have all of my family in Germany, my parents, my sister, nephew, aunts and uncles, and I see them about once a year, and of course I talk with them on the phone. Um, I, have, I have the weekly weekend call to my mom and dad, which is always great, um, and I have friends, so yes, I, I stay in touch, but it's, it's you know, interesting. after. Uh, almost 20 years here there's definitely sort of a focus of life that is not there anymore it's most definitely here and it's uh, now sort of a reverse culture shock when I go back to Germany I feel like I gotta figure out how these things work here I don't quite you know there's just little things that I don't understand or don't don't seem natural anymore don't seem natural anymore and I gotta get used to them again. Whereas here, I know how things work, I know what to do, I know how to behave. Okay, so what made you want to become a naturalized citizen? Well, it's a very big question. Um, I think there's a lot packed in there. I mean, you know, when, when I came to the US, for a long time it was this continual battle of actually continuously earning the right to stay in the States. Um, keeping my visa um, up to date and all of that is at cost and at great sort of expense of time you have to really be very proactive if you want to stay in this country and I started having all of my friends here my entire life here I felt I couldn't imagine leaving here anymore and year after year that feeling grew stronger and I felt like if I want to have personal security of knowing that I'm not going to, you know, my time is not going to run out, I'm not going to get kicked out, um, I really wanted to, a, as a first step, have a green card. And then uh, now that I was eligible to become a, a citizen, just sort of for the, for the sake of my own personal sense of, of security. And especially now that um, we're actually going to have a little baby girl, I felt particularly strongly about that because I could not imagine that just by the accident of some bureaucratic machinations that I would have to leave the country or, or not be able to come into the country again. And that, that was really the key, the key deciding factor for me. Okay. Um, so when you were thinking about becoming a naturalized citizen, did you talk a lot with your family about the pros and cons of the decision? It actually wasn't such a huge conversation. The, you know, my wife is an American citizen, and for her, I think she sort of just assumed that that would somehow naturally happen along the way, that I would become a citizen. and. Uh, we talked about that very early on, that I was sort of on that path and on that track. So there wasn't a lot we needed to discuss. It was more maybe with my parents a little bit. You know, if you tell your parents, uh, guess what? I'm now going to be a citizen of this other country over there. Um, that I can imagine that could be dicey in some families. In my family, it wasn't dicey at all. My parents were completely supportive and they said yes we understand you know if you want to have a life there and you want to work there you want that kind of stability and that's we support that wholeheartedly so they were they were incredibly supportive of it okay so um, once you started the process what were some of the major steps in becoming naturalized well there's a lot of steps along the way, and you know, little and big, but uh, one of the things is you have to be eligible to become naturalized, and if I recall this accurately, there are two ways to be eligible. One is either you have a green card for five years, 
or you are married to a U.S. citizen for five years. And um, we've only been married for three years, so my track was the green card, which I had had for five years. And then there's a whole series of things you need to do. You need to apply. Uh, there is a process of getting fingerprinted along the way. You, know, you get a background check. Uh, then there's a process of being interviewed um, in person. Uh, you have to answer questions about American history and civics. And uh, they make sure that you actually speak English and you can understand English. And then the at the end of the process, you go through a ceremony with lots of other people who have gone through the process as well, and you get sworn in as a citizen, which was a really much more moving event than I thought it would be. Can you tell me a little bit about the ceremony? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the ceremony here in D.C. was in a courthouse, um, and we were told to be there at 8, and there were long lines. Uh, they sort of separated those who were getting sworn in as citizens from those who were um, there to support those who were becoming mm -hmm. citizens, because we were sitting in different spaces within the within the courtroom. And for a long, then the process was a, a sort of a long waiting game. Everybody had to walk up, uh, get their paperwork checked one final time. Um, we were just sitting around for about two hours actually, and then at ten. The judge came in and addressed uh, everybody in the room, gave a very moving address. Uh, he told a personal story of how he actually always thought he was British by heritage, but then when he researched it, he found out that he was French. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he then, the really moving part was when they read off all the names of the people in the room. So I think we had about 150 people in the room. And so there was a clerk who had made sure that she really understood how everybody's name is pronounced. And she reads off your name and the country where you're originally from. And she did it in such a beautiful way. She did it in a way that really made you feel seen and, and present in that moment because she really left a lot of space between the names. She spoke the names slowly, and she did a beautiful job, at least for me, pronouncing the name, and I assume for others, because she asked everybody how to do it. And so everybody starts getting up one by one, and you hear these names from all the countries of the world. And so I kept looking over at my wife, who was sitting in the, in, in the, in the parallel aisle, and after the third person got up, my wife got the, the, her, her little handkerchief and she, she was crying because she felt it was so moving and I felt the same way it was you know with every person getting up you can only imagine the story that brought them here and sort of the, the trials and the struggle of getting to that moment and for some it was really palatable in their face I mean this was a huge deal I can imagine for some people in the room it literally meant the difference between life and death um, figuratively, but sometimes in reality, because it meant not having to go back to a country where they might be persecuted. And that's powerful. That's really powerful to see that. Great. Um, so can you tell me about the object that you brought and the story behind it? All right. So I brought a, a silly little object. Okay. Something goofy. Um, these are socks that my wife Meredith gave me on the evening before the ceremony. Meredith was very excited about this. Um, she just loved the fact that I would become an American citizen and she wanted to celebrate it. She threw a little dinner party for me afterwards the, 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 the evening of the ceremony and she gave me these socks and said I want you to wear these socks tomorrow when you become a citizen. And of course I couldn't say no. <laughs> and it was funny, I wore sort of a dark blue suit and I had these socks on and you could sort of not really see them when I was standing, but when I was walking or sitting down, those socks would peek out and I saw a couple of people just look at me and giggle. And then when I went to work after the ceremony, um, that was the topic for a lot of conversation. So this is, this is a fond memory of the sort of lighthearted and fun side and the celebration of that day for me. Excellent. 
So just in summary, kind of how has your life been affected or how do you think your life will be affected by having become a naturalized citizen? You know, I think what it really did for me was, in a way, it makes me look differently at others who have gone through the process. And it gives me a great appreciation for their resilience and for their courage and tenacity in going through the process. Because if you think about it, you know, for me, it was quote unquote easy. But even for me, it was so hard. Mm -hmm. There were times when I was two days away from having to leave the country because my visa was about to run out. There were times when I had to go to Vancouver to get my visa renewed because I had to leave the country. But I had the resources to do these things. You know, I had the financial resources to do them. I'm well educated. I, I'm, I'm a European. I have all of the sort of resources at my disposal, if you will. Um, come from a background where my parents supported where I was what I was doing, but I can only imagine if somebody comes from a country where they don't have those kinds of resources, where they don't have the kinds of family and friends that I had, where the threats are much more real. You know, I, I would have lost my, my social circle if I would have had to go back to Germany. It would have been really, really hard for me, but for other people, it's not just about your friends. It's about some very, very tangible, real consequences to you as a person and sometimes to your life. And that really, that gave me pause. Um, and that still gives me pause whenever I see somebody who came to this country and became a citizen. Just what it can really mean and what it really means for others. I know what it means for me and I can only imagine what it means for somebody for whom the struggle was was even harder than for me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.